Welcome to the first video in our lecture series about reinforcement learning, which we will refer to as RL from now on. We will be roughly following the first half of Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow's textbook. In this video, we will explain why we chose this book, share the motivations for learning RL, address some of the common areas of confusion when people start learning RL, and present the defining characteristics of problems that RL tools aim to solve. You will meet Pavlova and her nemesis Mochi. This book is very comprehensive and contains material for a two-semester course in advanced RL. It is the standard text used by many universities including Stanford, McGill, Carnegie Mellon and UCL. Google DeepMind was also a major contributor. The authors of the book, Richard Sutton and Andrew Bartow, are well known in the field as being founding contributors to this entire branch of artificial intelligence. You can download the entire book for free off the author's website called incompleteideas.net. Of course, you can purchase the physical book off Amazon. We will be following the second edition. There is also accompanying Python code for all of the examples. We will walk through the first one in the next video. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss it. This video will cover the first half of chapter one. In the next video, we will complete chapter one with the tic-tac-toe example. For learners of AI in general that is just starting to look into RL, the first few chapters will be sufficient to give you a solid sense of this branch of AI. Many computer science students don't realize that RL originated from human and animal psychology. It is the closest branch of AI to how biological beings actually learn. In fact, these concepts are so fundamental that many fields have converged into this area under different names. Here, we will be tackling RL using a computational approach. How can we build systems that can learn from its environment, guided by rewards, without the assistance of a human teacher? This diagram came from David Silver's UCL lecture slides, a very good fast-paced course to check out after these video. When we first start to learn RL concepts, we will use simplified examples from games, such as tic-tac-toe or chess, and it might be hard to see how those techniques can generalize to real-world problems. In fact, RL is one of the branches of AI that is the most flexible in being able to solve problems in the real world. And we are only scratching the surface. For example, drones, self-driving cars and the robots can walk or grab things, all have RL as a core part of their inner algorithms. There are many highly commercial online applications, such as personalization of banner ads and recommendation engines that optimizes click-through rates and conversion that are powered by RL. Many control systems in factories or providing temperature control inside large buildings uses RL. Actually, you can see that RL has a big role to play in our quest to tackle climate change. And yes, our trusty old friend ChatGPT was trained using unsupervised pre-training, followed by supervised learning and polished off with RLHF, which stands for Reinforcement Learning with Human Feedback. Not only does it have wide commercial applications, it is also one of the key techniques that is used in the quest for ASI artificial superhuman intelligence because RL systems can learn simply by interacting with an environment it is not limited by the ceiling of human knowledge many large language models trained using unsupervised learning of human generated content are able to exceed humans in terms of how much information it can digest and how fast it can generate but RL systems have the potential to actually exceed human knowledge when Google DeepMind first started to develop AlphaGo they gave the system access to the play history of human masters to learn from. Later, they developed AlphaGo Zero, which had no historical play data to learn from. The researchers just set the RL algorithm to play against itself. It was given no guidance from human experts, only told the rules of the game. After playing with each other over five million games, it learnt from this synthetic experience and can play better than the best human. When people say reinforcement learning, they can be referring to different things and this can be a source of confusion. Firstly, RL can refer to the set of problems that the field of RL research aims to solve. Secondly, RL can refer to the set of tools that researchers have developed to solve this special type of problem. There are three paradigms to machine learning. And of course, machine learning is a subset of the general concept of artificial intelligence. Firstly, supervised learning refers to systems that learn from humans using labeled data. For example, ingesting a million pictures that have been tagged by humans with cats and dogs and trees. From this kind of training data, supervised learning systems learn to associate certain features of those image pixels with the labels and learn to replicate humans in the image labeling task. Secondly, unsupervised learning can refer to a number of different techniques,
but the key defining characteristic is that there is no human-labeled data. There is a set of techniques that is designed to find hidden patterns in a data set. As a simple example, if you provided an unsupervised learning algorithm with shopping behavior data of a million customers of a supermarket, it is able to group them into segments that represent some similarity between members of the same cluster without any human supervision. Another set of techniques involves something like supervised learning. But instead of humans providing the correct answer, the machine just takes a block of text or an image, removes some words or some pixels from the original data, hides it and tries to guess what the right answer is. And of course it has the correct answer because the algorithm removed it in the first place. This is called self-supervision. Although reinforcement learning is also unsupervised, its objective is not to find hidden patterns from data, but rather to optimize actions to maximize a reward signal, often in an uncharted environment that even humans have not fully explored. Hence, it is seen as a separate paradigm. It is increasingly common to see these three techniques all used together to solve complex problems. For example, ChatGPT was built using all three techniques, but it is only scratching the surface of what RL can do. Another area of confusion is to do with artificial neural networks. If you have been learning about neural networks and all the different architectures, you might wonder as you enter the field of RL where all the neurons went, why are we suddenly presented with these equations with Q, S, A and V, and those neural networks are nowhere to be seen? Although neural networks have played a phenomenal role in the advancement of machine learning in the past decade, it is only one of many tools in the AI toolkit. Neural networks is not the same as AI or machine learning. RL presents a certain way of framing problems and has a set of tools which do not necessarily involve using neural networks. As RL problems become more complex, there are techniques which involve using supervised learning and neural networks within the RL framework as a building block of the whole algorithm. Let's start by looking at the types of problems that the RL tools are designed to solve. We need to introduce a few key characters in this example. This is Pavlova the Samoyed dog. Pavlova, or Pav for short, has a mortal enemy in the shape of a small round white Pomeranian, affectionately named Mochi, but is essential a walking ball of fury. Every morning Mr. Stick takes Pav out for a walk. He will have with him a bag of treats to reward Pav when she behaves well. On her walk, Pavlova has a set of actions to choose from. For the sake of simplicity, let's say there are three choices. Sit, walk or barking and lunging at mochi or trucks. In an attempt to stop Pav from barking and lunging, Mr. Stick will give Pav a treat whenever she sits and looks at him in a high-trigger scenario, such as mochi giving her an evil stare or a truck trundling past. Pavlova's goal is simple. It is to get as many treats as possible from Mr. Stick on her walk. Each walk we will refer to as an episode, which involves a series of actions and resulting scenarios which may or may not warrant rewards. What affects Pavlova's choice of actions? The state is a key concept in RL. You can think about the state as a set of all the information about the environment that Pav can sense which might impact her decision on actions to take. If Mochi is staring at her and barking, she might be inclined to bark back and lunge at Mochi. If Pav sees that Mr. Stick forgot to bring the snack bag, she might be less inclined to obey commands and sit in the context of Mochi's triggering behavior. Pavlova and Mochi are real. You can see Pav's brain whirring as she struggles with the dilemma of sitting for a reward or barking at Mochi. Another key characteristic of RL problems is that the environment is uncertain. In this example, Mr. Stick watches Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer, on TV. Caesar's advice is that once the dog's good behavior is embedded, then it is good to fade out the treats by introducing some randomness. So good behavior only gets treats some of the time. To Pav, this is an uncertain environment. For a given scenario or state, if she chooses a certain action, there might be a higher probability of getting treats, but it is not guaranteed. Mochi is also a part of the environment in this example. Mochi is also stochastic. When Pav is sitting and facing Mr. Stick and not staring at Mochi, Mochi will sometimes still bark at Pav, but sometimes will just walk past. Here, we will introduce an important concept in reinforcement learning, the idea of a policy. A policy is just how Pav's doggy brain map states to actions. If there were no treats, Pav's natural policy would be to bark and lunge every time the state involves mochi or a moving truck. However, now that Mr. Stick has been giving rewards to Pav when she chooses to sit during these states to reinforce desired behavior, Pavlova has been updating her policy accordingly, so to maximize the number of treats she gets on the walk. 
How does Pav know for a given state which action would provide the most reward? She doesn't know, but she can try different actions under different states and see what is the probability of getting a treat. For example, she might find that in a state where Mochi is staring at her, if she chooses to sit, she gets a treat 90% of the time. If she chooses to keep walking, she gets a treat 10% of the time. If she chooses to bark or lunge, then she will not get any treats. However, if she tries these three actions when Mochi is not there, she might find that the probabilities of getting treats is lower. If Pav just randomly sits down during a walk with no stimulants, Mr. Stick might not want to encourage that and offer no rewards. In summary, a policy is the doggy's protocol for deciding what action to take for a given state or scenario. Training helps to change the policy to a more desirable one with the use of treats. In this example, you can see the four typical characteristics of an RL problem. Firstly, the agent, aka Pavlova, has a clear goal that it wants to maximize. Secondly, it is able to sense and understand the current state of the environment. Thirdly, the agent has decision-making power to choose actions that affects the environment. Finally, RL problems often involve a series of state changes and actions over time, forming a sequence, also referred to as an episode. The objective of RL algorithms is to provide a way to find the best policy that maximizes the agent's goal, despite unknowns and uncertainties in the environment. Now that we have discussed how RL problems are framed, let's have a look at what solutions can help us solve these problems. Firstly, we have a policy, which we have touched on already. The aim of an RL solution is to find the best policy. The best policy involves choosing an action given the current state that will result in a new state associated a high future stream of rewards. You can envisage a policy as a table that has all the possible states as rows and possible actions across the columns. An optimal policy could involve filling out this table with ones and zeros, so each row is mapped to the best action we will see more concrete examples of this later on. Secondly, there is a reward signal. There is a number associated with each state which indicates how much reward is given if the agent lands in that state. Imagine a big list of all possible states and next to each state is a number, indicating the reward to be expected. If the environment is stochastic, then it could be a probability distribution of receiving different rewards with the expected reward as the mean. Third is the value function. This is a more complicated concept to grasp. You can also think of it like a big list of possible states, and next to each state is a number, indicating the expected value. What is the difference between a reward and a value? A value is a prediction of the total stream of future rewards to be expected starting from a given state. In order to know the value, one must assume that the agent is following a certain policy. So the value function is always evaluated together with a specific policy in mind, the value function is important to help the agent make good long-term decisions. For example, if the agent was playing a game of chess, perhaps it knows that it is a few steps away from setting a trap that results in very high likelihood of winning the game. However, to get to that desirable state, the agent must sacrifice a few pieces in the short term. One can say that the biggest mission that RL solutions need to solve for is the value function. Finally, is the model of the environment. A deterministic model will enable us to predict given a certain state and a certain action, what will be the next state and what is the reward associated with that state? However, in most real-life scenarios, there is no deterministic model available that enables us to accurately predict what comes next after we take a given action while in a given state. Later on, we will cover different tools that can either guess the model or just directly solve the RL problem in a model-free way. More on this later. All this might sound quite abstract at this stage, no worries. In the next video, we will provide a concrete example using tic-tac-toe and help you to visualize and get a better understanding of each of these components.